Hey everybody, this is Roy Kennedy, and I'm here today taking a look at some more Lorcana cards. This is the second set, Rise of the Floodborne. Um, we got a couple of these starter decks in, and I opened up a bunch of booster packs. Um, but me and Chris played a few games of this, um, and uh, I just wanted to give my thoughts on not only the starter decks, but um, the expansion as a whole. So let's get right down and look at some of the cards. So there's a bunch of different cards that have come out for the new set here. Um, you do have some of the seven dwarves, which is kind of cool, and they have kind of like a little tribal effect where some of the dwarves will buff other dwarves, and then also like some of the dwarves can't do different abilities. You put it in here, like Bashful has a lot of lore that he could gain for only four, but of course you can't quest with him unless you have uh, another seven dwarf character in play. And you have a bunch of different combos with a bunch of those guys. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting to see uh, just the different costs of stuff. Like for me, when I play the game, I value lore. What Like lore is the point of the game. That's what you're trying to get. So I'm always trying to look at like characters that you can get a lot of lore for, for really cheap. Um, that they, it's cheap to get the character out there. But then of course they normally don't have as good of stats for attacking and defending and stuff like that for challenges. Um, but yeah, there's several different cards in this set that uh, have ended up being pretty interesting. Um... As, as you play the game, one of the new mechanics is uh, basically resist things that allow you to, let's see if I can find a resist character in here. Um, basically resist will allow you to, actually let me just go down to some of the items I know. So mouse armor basically allows you to choose a character and they gain resist one. Basically resist is going to basically reduce damage whenever you're taking damage in. So it just kind of helps protect your characters. And there's several different characters that have resist in here and items and stuff like that that'll give you resist. Like this charge on um, the chosen character gains challenger two, which means when you're attacking, you get two extra attack and resist to this turn. So you can attack somebody and not take as much damage back. Stuff like that's really cool um, to kind of help protect your character. So resist is one of the new mechanics in the game. Um, I will say a couple of the standout characters that I really liked um, in this. One of them is uh, this uh, beast, Tragic Hero. He has uh, Shift 3, so you can play him on another beast for 3. And then at the start of your turn, if this character has no damage draw a card, I feel like drawing cards is like king in Lorcana because it's so you run out of cards so fast in your hand um, that being anything that lets you draw a card is amazing just because you're able to keep that tempo up and maybe hopefully best your opponent and then if he does have damage he gets plus four um, for his strength for being able to challenge other people there um, and this costing five and being able to shift him for three seems really good um, so that's really awesome um, there's another card that I really enjoy probably my favorite card in the set it's one of the purple cards, and yeah, I know they all have different stone types, <laughs> um, but I'm not that hard card in the game, so I don't know as much. But this Pinocchio, um, he costs two, and he's only a 1-1, one, one, but the fact that he can give you three lore when you quest. A majority of the time when you play a character down, they're going to be able to quest at least once unless they have some sort of action card to be able to knock them out. So I think that card is amazing. And another card that I think is really good as well is there is a... Where is it at? Uh, the... Madam Mim Fox. Basically, she comes in with Rush, so she can run down people. Um, the fact she costs three and has four attack, she can really take stuff out. I, I really enjoy any of the characters with Rush because I, when I play the game, I like to try to get lore as fast as possible. But the first turn you play a character down, they can't really get you lore or attack. So if somebody has Rush, you get that one turn in where you can attack something. So this can be great for sniping and getting a little bit of tempo advantage on your opponent. Um, and then while you're still trying to race to get all of that lore. Um, but yeah, I really, uh, the, the set is super interesting with all the different stuff. The games we've played have been very interesting as well. I really like this Belle as well. <laughs> the fact she costs five and, uh, she has shift three. So of course you can play her on another Belle, but then whenever she's challenged, um, the challenging, uh, player has to discard all the cards in their hand. So if they, they're either a going to have to not attack her at all and she's going to be giving you three lore each turn which they don't want or wait till they play out all of their other cards or play all the cards that they need to play and then attack her because the tempo they're going to lose for discarding their entire hand if they have a big hand would be huge and there's no way anybody would dare do that sort of thing um the green faction here has a ton of stuff to make your opponent discard stuff um, and i really like this uh finn rider as well the fact that if your opponent's hand is empty he's going to have four questing which could combo well with a lot of the other things that have uh, discard cards out of your opponent's hand discarding cards out of your opponent's hand is such like a black thing and it's so hard to do a lot of times but in lorcana it's like holy smokes you can 
like wreck someone else's hand a lot, which is which is pretty crazy as well. And I love anything that allows you to draw in the game also. Uh, but yeah, there's a ton of really great cards. Of course, all of it, Lorcana still has all of the fancy alternate art cards that end up going for tons and tons of money um, that people really enjoy as well. Uh, and if like, oh, you pull that, I don't know. These cards normally just seem so expensive. One that I do like, I don't necessarily need the alternate art version, but the regular version of it is Arthur because he, when he quests, you can return another character to your hand and you, uh, he gets to gain, you get to gain two lore. Um, and this is great for tons of different combos. Anything that allows you to return cards to your hand means that you can play that again for any of the inter-battle effects, which is really cool as well, especially since purple has a ton of cards that allow you to draw cards when you put them into battle. He can help with draw a lot. Also, it has several rush cards as well, so you can rush out there, take a little bit of damage, knock somebody out, then quest next turn, throw her back in your hand, throw them back out, and rush again. Um, there's a lot of interesting combos you can do with this sort of card, um, and that's why the card's going for, I think, like 15 bucks on cool stuff currently. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Lorcana is an interesting game where it's like, I, I want to dip my toes into it, but the fact that it's like so expensive <laughs> makes it a little bit hard for me to uh, go all in and full bore. But I know a lot of people out there are still really enjoying the game. Another card that I really think would be interesting if you could actually play it properly is uh, the queen here. I know she's not that good of a card, but you choose a character in your hand and you discard her, discard it, and you gain lore equal to the lore on the card that got discarded. And this is really interesting with stuff that you would never actually normally play, like this uh, goofy card um, that's a 10 out of 10 out of 10 it takes nine to play but it does give you four lore there's a lot of other cards that give you four lore which would be easier to do it with but that means it's, it's just this goofy card is goofy in general um let me know in the comments if you've ever actually played goofy i doubt it but 10 10 with a uh, four lore is kind of hilarious um, but yeah, it's cool that they're doing all this stuff and all the nods to Disney and all the different characters. And it's really cool to see the same character in a bunch of different forms. It's kind of interesting. So uh, let's close this up and uh, I'll tell you what I think about these. This is mostly what I played. So, the Rise of the Floodborne starter decks, um, these come with a bunch of different cards in it. This one here has the uh, the Merlin stuff that's like popping stuff back in your hand and you have several resist characters and things like that. And then the other one has like the seven dwarves in it and a, a bunch of different things like that. It's very interesting to have these decks play against each other. I feel like they're decently evenly matched. And if you wanna play the game casually, go ahead and just grab a couple of the starter decks and just play with those and see how you feel about the game. You don't necessarily have to invest tons of money just to enjoy playing the game. I do find Lorcana is a very interesting game. I'm so used to playing Magic and things like that where they have all these different reactions and you can be a lot more defensive. In this, it's really just a race to get to that 20 lore, trying to get up there before your opponent does and trying to figure out the best moves to like gain tempo, knocking out different characters. It's like you have to figure out how to gain that advantage on your opponent. It's like, is lore, is gaining questing with this character the best thing to do or is it trying to gain a tempo advantage by taking out that character? There's all those interesting decisions. So Lorcana actually ends up being a pretty deep game overall. I always said that Lorcana is kind of interesting because I thought it's like marketed very much towards kids, more of a Pokemon style thing, but I think the game is actually really deep and is actually really more geared towards gamers just because of the interesting combos and the tempo plays you have to play to actually play well in the game. But yeah, I, I still really enjoy it. I still give it a 7.5. It's not something I'm going to like dive all in, but it definitely gets a seal of approval for me. I think it's a fun game. And if you love Disney and you love that theme, the fact that it's become more accessible for people is awesome. I hope that the accessibility doesn't dwindle the hype that people are having for the game. Sometimes when things are rare and hard to get, people are still super excited and super raving about a game, but then when they can actually get it, they're like, oh, it's not as exciting when you can actually find the product. Um, I'm hoping people still enjoy it. I'm interested to see what comes in the next set. I don't know if we'll continue to do tons of videos on Lurkana overall, but just interesting to see. Let us know in the comments below, are you still playing Lurkana? Is this still something you're enjoying? or was the hype just a fad for you? Um, let me know below. I think the game is enjoyable. It's not something I'm going to dive all in. Um, I enjoy Disney, but it's not like my favorite end-all be-all thing. But I do think the game is solid and has interesting play decisions as you play the game. Anyway, that has been Lorcana: Rise of the Floodborne. I've been Roy Kennedy. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll see you on the next one.